So being booted up into the system itself, here we're having the first menu. Okay, doesn't have any, let's say cover. That's a little bit of a downside, but so far everything seems to be looking fine. So when it comes to, let's say, different kind of emulator options, we do have this, but I will show you in a minute how and what. So the game list, of course, is smaller than the previous review I did some time ago. And that has to do of the SD card being, let's say, smaller or like having less storage space. But there was actually so much cool stuff that we can actually play on this. And the list is absolutely massive when it comes to the library, but there will always be, of course, games that we're going to be missing out. However, if you're pressing the square over here, having the PlayStation Portable, and PlayStation Portable is, of course, an absolutely amazing system with many hidden gems. So we're only having 67 titles on here for now. So that is not a lot. And I know for sure a lot of cool games are missing out. A lot of times are quite fast, but do notice that it hiccups a little bit with music. So let's check out. We're having over here some PlayStation 1. Many different games in here. 89 in total. Okay, pressing the square again, getting the N64 games. But N64 will be in hit or miss. So this is not overall perfect emulation. We have 134 games at this moment. But all kinds of different titles. But we're going to be focusing on games like Cruise in the USA. Pressing it again, having the Super NES. I just love the way how it looks. Over here, the NES. With many different titles. Pressing it again, having the GBA. And most of these systems, it's not something you should pick up on PC for because there are so many cheap 39, let's say 40, 50 dollar devices from AliExpress that you can buy and do the same thing with. Okay, then we the Game Boy Color version, but over 500 games. And I understand they do this because these games are super small. They're kilobytes. Game Boy Classic. And over here we're having the Sega Mega Driver Genesis 16-bit era. But it was quite unfortunate that we don't have every single, let's say, system. No, no 32X, no Sega CD. But only like a handful of good games, in my opinion. It is that we do have a lot of games missing out. But we can play with cheaper devices. So this is the recently played list. And we're back to the PS Vita. So this is actually when it comes to, let's say, the menu and how it actually works and what you're getting. So PlayStation 1 emulation is also great on this device. I would not really buy a PS Vita for PlayStation 1 emulation. And that's a simple reason because there are just so many devices on China, so let's say Marketplace now. They can just play all of these games and wow, it's a miracle that they finally added the music. I think when it comes to like the reservation music, man, it's such a cool music. I've been enjoying it for many years. The only downside I find with the PS Vita when you're going to be using the A, B and X, Y buttons that you're going to be putting your thumb against the right joystick. Do of the form factor, but emulation is perfect, even putting it on the right resolution and still the d-pad man is absolutely great so when it comes to emulation of playstation 1 portable or playstation 1 on the ps vita i can even place it on the playstation portable itself there are so many ways to play playstation 1 now but it runs absolutely great so loading into the N64 emulation, we do have widescreen shenanigans and some weird guessing going on, but let's get into the games. So this is one of those games that normally always run fine on most of these devices. The main, let's say, intro is absolutely extolling and not like it's supposed to be, but getting into the game, we do have some okay emulation. So it's going to be a hit or miss with this. We do have all of the right controls. We have the joysticks and everything for configuring and also like playing the games. I did notice that the joystick of the PS Vita is very responsive. And I mean like really responsive because of the short travel compared with the original joystick of the N64. Not that it's going to be like a problem in the let's see, future when playing all kinds of different games, but I really need to get myself into the practice mode. Trying to figure out how to move around. <laughs> oh man. But you can just see that some of the games on emulation of the N64 runs fine. 
Another thing I wanted to do is try another N64 game just to see how that actually works out. We do have this weird overall let's say lines in the screen itself sometimes but getting into the game is kind of weird but you will see that from the start of that this game seems to be working just fine. Okay that go back thing was not like it's supposed to be. Well let's see if this game is actually playable. So the weird thing is like the stuttering was not in the title main but you will see and hear it when it comes to the game itself. So I would like to say just remove those N64 games or most of them from the playlist itself. Wait, did it just shut down? Oh no, it's still working. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, there's a trike is running. Yeah, <laughs> that was kind of weird. You know, and that's one of those tiny flaws you're getting into a device like this. And the same story like with PlayStation 1, I would not really buy this for, I say, retro emulation because there are so many different, let's say, solutions out there, particularly when it comes to 8-bit and 60-bit. However, I do love the D-pad of this thing. So playing is going to be a lot of fun. An emulation of the Super NES is just perfect. But when getting into the game, everything works like a charm. And the same story of the Game Boy Advance applies to the PlayStation 1 and many other retro games. There are so many devices that have just great overall emulation when it comes to these systems like Game Boy Advance. No weird audio. That's one of the things they completely mess up most of the time with these, let's say, cheaper to cheap cheap emulation devices from China. No audio delay whatsoever. So far I can see no screen tearing. I can just really enjoy this. So the only thing I'm actually missing with the PS Vita is going to be some meme. That would be cool to have Neo Geo meme on this. So out of the box, this thing is fully unlocked. So maybe we need to mess around with a little bit more and maybe just use RetroArch when it comes to some game or other, let's say, emulation, because there are so many cool games on there. Okay, so let's boot up some Sega Genesis. And for the people who don't know how you actually play this game, you're going to be punch him in the face and kick him in the dick. That's how it goes with Beefcake and Woofies. All right. Let's do it. Push him in the face and kick him in the dick. That's the way how you play. Woohoo! Woohoo! Yeah! Oh! <laughs> 